Good morning, everybody, on this rather cold morning, at least here in the Baltic States. And welcome to our already fourth installment of our interview here of this series, Morning Coffee with a CEO. This time, however, it's also a first, since we are hosting our first Pan Baltic Morning Coffee ever. And for this special occasion, I'm really very happy that we have Kaspar Skalvishis with us here, the general manager of Bosch in the Baltic countries and a long standing uh, member of our management board in Latvia. Kaspas, welcome and thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Dominic. And um, a very good morning to everybody. Uh, I'm really very positively surprised and I'm actually yeah, a little bit nervous because of such a high number of participants. I, I didn't expect that, to be honest. But uh, yeah, thank you for, for your interest and trust. And I do hope that it will be at least not, not too boring to, uh, for, for all of you for, who decided to take part. And yeah, uh, we should be clear that there are two most important things in, for all of us, which is health, especially nowadays, and time. And if you decided to spend half an hour uh, uh, together with, with uh, me and Dom Dominic, so yeah, thank you for this trust. Looking forward for a good discussion. We will have this, and I'm pretty sure it won't be boring. I'm, I'm certain of that. And now we have also already over 50 participants. So that's very good. So, but before we start, um, I would like to shortly introduce you, uh, Kaspers, uh, because there's actually a lot to talk about. And um, with Kaspers, as you will see, we have a lot of interesting uh, topics to cover. So, as you probably know, since I mentioned it already, Kaspers is a member of our AHK board and also our president in Latvia, for which we are very grateful. What you might not know about him is that he is a Latvian with an Estonian great-grandmother and a Lithuanian family name. Kaspers has worked for Bosch since 1999 and is currently responsible for the Bosch companies in the Baltic States and also the business units in Belarus and Kaliningrad. He told me also before our interview that for him, trust and respect to other people is very important to him and that he has a rather large family with three children and a Labrador. Kaspers, he told me, likes to spend time outside in the nature with his family and um, especially at the Baltic Sea, where he sometimes even goes into the water in the middle of the winter. So Kaspers, have you been in the water this winter already? Uh, yeah, this is something what uh, everybody should decide by, by his or her own whether to try it or not, but uh, I would recommend at least once to, to try to go and swim in winter. Maybe not to start with Baltic Sea, because there can be waves and this could be a little bit challenging, but uh, this is definitely a very special experience. And, and yes, I, uh, some two weeks ago, last time, I, this is when I went to swim. Yeah. Wow. It's not a swimming, it's a rather a short moment in water, but this brings some very special emotions afterwards. <laughs> I, I can imagine, I can imagine. Okay, Kaspers, um, let's start with your cultural experience. Uh, since you and Bosch, like we at the Chamber, are steering um, your business in all three Baltic countries with the German mother company. So, Kaspers, what is your experience regarding the differences, let's say, between the Baltic states among each other on the one hand and on the other hand, also in comparison with Germany? So what are the biggest differences, let's say, between the countries and also how are you dealing with those differences when it comes to yeah, common challenges or let's say, I don't know, local interpretations of, of certain questions in your everyday work? Uh, yeah, it's somehow a very clear question, although it's very, very complex. And uh, one could uh, expect now the, the one part of my answer like, yeah, there are somebody in Baltics who are considered to be slow or very fast, contrary and, and stuff like that. But uh, to be honest, I, I don't like um, such uh, simply simple answers to, to such an important question. And uh, basically, I strongly believe that uh, there are only two things which we all as human beings have in common. 
And these are very simple things. So all of us, doesn't matter whether in the Baltics, in Germany or in Americas, we all want to be happy and we all want to avoid suffering. This is the very basic, which is really true for everybody on this planet. But everything else, it's getting more and more complex because then we have to consider cultural background, education, family, age, gender, etc., etc. So it's it's very dangerous, I would say, to 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 put people to label people and make very simple stereotypes. Yeah, even though a lot of scientists are doing that. Uh, for example, the very quite famous uh, Louis cultural model, uh, Dr. Louis cultural model, which puts, for example, uh, Lithuanians more together with Polish and and um, French people according to the cultural types. Uh, on the other hand, Estonians and Latvians are more closer to, to German people, Swedes and, and, and Finns. But again, it's still too, too simple. Yeah? And, and in each and every country and, and culture and, and nation, you can find very different people. There can be completely different people having the same nationality. And I think that the most important thing is that, that we really look on particular person on the uh, characteristics of this person, of, of the potential of the particular person, and, and then work together. Um, obviously, we, we here in the Baltics, uh, we have shared a lot of common history, yeah? whether it is uh, Estonia and Latvia being part of Livonia in, in uh, medieval ages, or, or um, then all three Baltic countries uh, being part of Soviet Union some 70 years ago. Uh, and then uh, regaining independence again, again, common thing of all three Baltic countries. But um, still, I would say, yes, we, we, uh, we have a lot of common and we can understand each other. But at the same time, we, we are also different and we have to accept this and, and consider this. Yeah? Uh, uh, you, you ask regarding the um, relationships to Germany and, and possibility to understand Germans. And again, I, uh, for example, in Estonia, I have heard from, from German persons that Estonians are even more Germans than Germans themselves, yeah? which shows that they are, yeah, uh, again, a cliche, a very, very precise and, and uh, they, they observe the time and, and so on. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, I, I think we here in the Baltics, we can understand very good the German culture, the German people, but uh, we can also, so to say, translate it uh, in, in relationships to other nations, for example, the, the people in, in uh, Russia or Belarus, yeah, and, and, and really to put, put uh, different cultures together. So um, I, I think we here in the Baltics, we are, we are uh, rather flexible and open, and, and uh, this is also one of our benefits, benefits which we can and, and shall use. In, in our everyday life. Does this answer your question? Yes, very much so. Uh, thank you. I, I think also from your answer, what becomes obvious that um, because it was a very considerate answer and, and it was obvious that you don't like to talk in cliches. And I think this, this also reflects in the culture of the Baltics. Um, they're very much able to adapt to different cultures. And I think this is, you know, your, your answer to this question was kind of the evidence of, of, of that. So yeah, thank you very much, you answered it. Um, Kaspers, also let's talk about yeah, the elephant in the room or the topic that's on everybody's mind right now, of course, um, the Corona crisis. Um, everybody is looking uh, forward to the end of, of the lockdown, but um, for now, I would like to ask you, how did the COVID virus affect the business of, of Bosch in the Baltic States? Uh, maybe also in Germany um, and everything that's connected to that. Can you work remotely? Um, also, what is your opinion regarding the future of work? Do you think that we will ever be able to return to the old working model like before the crisis? And I do not mean in terms of that we will never get off the virus, um, but I mean in terms of um, will we ever be able to get back to the old working model in, in our heads? Uh, very important question. Uh, thanks, Dominic. And, uh, but before I, I start to, to make some comments on that, uh, yeah, do, do, all, uh, do everybody uh, have a cup of good coffee? Because I do, 
I really like uh, latte macchiato and yeah, I enjoyed that. I hope you, you do as well. Um, but um, yeah, COVID-19, it's definitely a very big challenge for, for all, all of us. I just uh, recently heard that uh, one sophisticated mathematician in, in England calculated that if we put all the, so to say, particles of this virus in one place, this would be not more than uh, yeah, small uh, can of, of Coca-Cola and, and uh, such a small amount could really change the world as, as we see. Yeah? But um, let's go uh, step by step and um, uh, regarding the business development, uh, I, I, I would like to be very open and fair here. So in the spring when, the, when it started and when we got the first wave, uh, it was really very unclear how the situation will develop and actually the expectations regarding the business development were not very positive. So we were very cautious. We introduced a lot of different measures, but um, as it was said by, by our uh, top, top manager, Mr. Denner, so who is the, the head of, of Bosch Group, uh, we have to safeguard our business, but our top, very top priority is the health and, and security of associates. And, and this we followed uh, through, throughout the crisis of, of COVID-19. So number one priority, top priority was, was uh, health and safety of all our associates, our, our employees. And uh, we managed it, it, it quite well, uh, globally as well as here in the Baltics. We, we had few cases, obviously, but um, in all those cases, the infections were acquired externally. There were no more, so to say, internal widespread internal infection within the, the offices. Um, the business figures in the spring, uh, actually the, the, the forecasts were very grim, but the spring was uh, brought very positive changes and both uh, on global level as well as here in the Baltics, actually we ended up much, much better than expected yeah, uh, in, in the spring. It was still slightly below the, so to say, pre-COVID plans. Yeah, we, we didn't achieve them. Uh, in Baltics, actually, we, we did. We, we came very, very close to that. Uh, I would say we achieved that in the Baltics. Globally, we, we missed a little bit, but uh, what, what is very important, uh, we not only managed to really uh, safeguard our, our personal, our, our associates, uh, but we managed to be profitable on global level as well as here in the Baltics. And, and this is really a great achievement where I, every time, when I have the opportunity, I, I thank my, my colleagues and, and, and my associates here, here in the Baltic countries. So, um, I, I also would like to, to take out a few positive things in regards to this crisis. So, not uh, that the, the crisis and the, the virus per se is something positive, but uh, it definitely speed up a lot uh, different important things for example digitalization yeah we really forced several important digital projects uh, here in bosch baltics and and actually now we are launching for example new uh, bosch business portal for our customers yeah this is also very much because of, of this crisis and and when we saw the need to to be even more digital and also the the work from home it was actually no other very much no other choice to do that and, and to shift uh, working from home. Before that, we had a quite long discussions whether this can work or not before the COVID, yeah? because we also introduced it very slowly, step by step, giving some opportunity to work from home. Nowadays, actually, everybody, almost everybody works from home. And that this is now even an exception if somebody comes to the office. Yeah? And, and it works. It works well. And... Um, uh, yeah, uh, when it is not really working, and this is, uh, I also have to admit, is uh, if you need something uh, like brainstorming or real, really creative teamwork, then it's challenging to do via online. But all the regular stuff, regular meetings, routine processes, this works very well. So I see no problem to, to have it online and, 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 and doing remote working also in the future. And regarding the future, uh, to be honest, I don't know. I, I, my expectation is that we will not be back where we were a year ago before the COVID-19. So the world will, will be different. So first of all, we don't know 
when exactly will we have, so to say, managed all everything uh, around the COVID-19. Yeah, now, now we have vaccination, we, we may have this uh, herd immunity, but this will take time and, and we don't know exactly how it will work out. It, it will get better and, and the restrictions will be less than, than they are now. But still, um, it can be that some restrictions will stay in place. And uh, yeah, then the very big question is uh, what to do with, with offices, the way they, and the way how we work. And I think this will, will be something in between, uh, in between uh, complete, uh, so to say, physical presence in the office as it used to be before COVID-19. But it, it won't be also the complete remote working. It will be something in the middle. And then obviously the big question is, uh, yeah, what to do and, and what kind of offices do we need? Do we need a big offices? Uh, do we need, a, so to say, open space offices like it was a trend before COVID-19? Or do we need a, a separate rooms to be more safe? So these are, these are open questions which we are now considering. But yeah, I think we will work much more remotely and we will also in the future be much more digital than we used to be a year ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Kaspers. Um, um, there are a lot of questions also from my side regarding this topic, but since we are trying to cover a broad spectrum of, of different topics, I would like to um, go to the next question. Also, I would shortly like to mention that we now already have 64 participants and I would like to remind everybody that if you have some questions from your side, uh, please do not hesitate and post them here in the chat. Um, then I can read them to, to Kaspers, or if you would like, you can even ask um, the questions directly to Kaspers. But um, let's continue with the next question, Kaspers. And um, I always like to touch upon um, yeah, leadership style and uh, social corporate responsibility um, with my interview partners. And I know that Bosch is um, very strong in the field of social corporate responsibility. Um, even as you told me before that Bosch belongs with 92% to the um, Robert Bosch Stiftung, which is a charitable foundation, and is not a joint stock company, which is rather unusual for a company that big uh, and successful. So what kind of social benefits does Bosch offer to its employees here in the Baltic States? I know that everybody has the right to be released from work one day per year in order to do charity work, which I find um, very fascinating actually. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, this and maybe what other um, benefits you offer for your, for your associates? Yeah, and, and again, uh, good point and important question. And, and actually, maybe this is one of the reasons why I'm still with Bosch. Yeah, because when I started uh, more than 20 years ago, I didn't expect to, to spend so many years at one company. So actually, I, I, <laughs> I thought, let's, let's try out try out let's see how how this big german company works what can i learn there and, and they may, then maybe yeah look for something other but i i like to be with bosch and and one of the reasons is really really the the whole structure of the company which as you mentioned is is quite unique and and sometimes uh, people from outside they don't understand how it can work because uh, yeah the biggest shareholder although there are no real shares we are not not a stock listed company the, the biggest shareholder is charity foundation with uh, no rights to say how to do business it's somehow strange isn't it yeah but uh, it is so and it's, it's working well and and uh, bosch with its slogan invented for for life is bringing a lot of really useful uh, things and innovations uh, just to name one uh, the if, if, uh, if we are driving a car, most likely our car will have uh, something from Bosch inside and most likely this will be ESP, which uh, is electronic stabilization program. And in uh, Europe alone, in the last 25 years, it has saved at least 15,000 lives, uh, avoiding uh, more than half a million accidents. Yeah? So, and, and I could continue with a quite long of list of, of such things. But uh, yeah, the structure is quite, quite unique. And, and uh, basically, the, the main uh, corporate social responsibility activity is this charity foundation, which has three main fields of activity. This is education, this is, these are health topics, and these are different global issues. Uh, for example, this is uh, 
climate change, uh, this is de democracy uh, topics, uh, this is the issue with inequality and, and so on. So there are, are a lot of different topics which this charity foundation is dealing with. So therefore, I would say that, that the main task is that we as a company, Bosch, we do our business well, and, and then, so to say, the dividends the, uh, will, will go to, to charity, mainly to the charity, yeah? because the, the Bosch family uh, has the remaining 8% 8, 8 of, the, of the shares. So, so they, 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 yeah, uh, it's, it's very interesting setup. This was the, uh, so to say, the last will of, of the company's founder, uh, Mr. Robert Bosch. Uh, and, and the reason was that, first of all, he was uh, himself very much involved in, in um, corporate social responsibility activities. And on the, on the other hand, he uh, didn't want to, uh, so to say, to allow the potential for a company to be split up uh, if there are some issues within the family. So this is this is unique uh, setup. And, and as far as I know, some other companies are considering to, to have something like that. Yeah. Uh, coming to the Baltics, yeah, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, our main task is, is really to do, do very good our business and, and to be profitable. And, and then, the, so to say, the big charity activi activities will be realized. Um, however, also here locally, as you mentioned, we, we give the opportunity to our associates to take part by charity activities. And um, in, in uh, yeah, maybe in a not very, very big way, but in, in, uh, sometimes if we have the opportunity, we also support some local initiatives and projects. Uh, for example, the SOS uh, Children Villages where we have, have provided some support in, in Latvia and, and, and uh, also Lithuania. Uh, as, as th there are some, some other activities, but definitely the big thing is being done by this charity foundation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Kaspers. Um, we have actually a question from the audience and um, I think it makes sense to um, go a little bit away from, from my questions and involve the audience here. And the question, Kaspers, to you is from um, Matthias Kaiser, and he asks, how do you see the digitalization and automation business in the Baltics? He says, in my experience, there is so far very little digitalization and automation in Latvia, which has a negative impact on the overall production efficiency. What do you think about this? Uh, yeah, yeah the, uh, digitalization per se is quite a buzzword, and and then we should be uh, more more precise. So, if we if we uh, think with or or if we if we speak um, uh, regarding the digitalization within the industry, so-called industry 4.0, uh, then I would say rather I, I tend to agree uh, with with this. Uh, uh, so to say, with 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 question or or with information which was uh, contained in the question that uh, th there there could be more uh, progress in the Baltics. So there are, are certain clusters and activities in Lithuania, in Latvia. I would say there are some island solutions and and uh, but again, this is this is regarding Industry 4.0. In regarding other areas of digitalization, I, I think Estonia nowadays is a <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 okay, there is a lot of PR also within Estonia, but, but there is a good reason for that. And um, globally, Estonia is regarded as, as digi one of the best digitalized nations. And, and just recently on, on BBC, I heard that uh, the digital advisor of, of Estonian government is, is now cooperating very closely with the uh, World Health Organization in order, so to say, to digitalize the, the uh, vaccination and, and, and test, uh, so to say, uh, solutions, yeah. So and 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 and, and uh, I think Baltics are on good way in regards to digitalization. Again, not in all areas, but there there are a lot of good things happening here, and and um, many areas of software development. Uh, I think we are quite advanced, and and uh, a lot of of big companies have have uh, put the software development centers uh, and and here. And, and this is true for all three Baltic countries. So therefore I would say uh, it's not perfect, but uh, there are many areas where, where Baltics uh, are quite good in regards to digitalization. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Kaspers. I, I actually agree. Um, uh, Kaspers, I would like to ask you another question and touch upon two things that you mentioned earlier. 
first thing that you said is um, that you didn't plan to stay that long with Bosch and that you just came there to a German company and to see what you can learn there. So my first question would be, what did you learn actually at Bosch? Um, and my second, well, let's say the second part of this question is also what you mentioned, the uh, slogan of Bosch, which is invented for life. And behind this, I'm pretty sure that there are certain values behind. So what did you learn from Bosch, maybe also in terms of, of, of values and, and, and leadership? Yeah, and, and actually I will try to, to give one answer to, to both of your questions. Um, uh, but what I learned, and this is also the reason why, why I still still here in, in uh, this position. Yeah, by the way, I didn't start it as a general manager in the Baltics. I started actually as, as a sales responsible in, in one of the divisions here. And then step by step, uh, I, I got the opportunity to do something more. Uh, there was a, a time of, of, of my professional life, which I spent also in Germany uh, within Bosch. Um, I came back, uh, so when I got even more responsibilities and I really enjoyed that. So uh, what I learned is, is really to, to be responsible for more and bigger things. And, and uh, yeah, if somebody would have told me then those 20 years ago that, that I will do that in, in 10 or, or 15 years, I wouldn't believe that, yeah, because this was just after the uni uh, university and, and yeah. I, I really was was not thinking about such big things, but I'm, I'm happy about that. And and uh, as as I said, one of the main reasons is 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 the values, which very well corresponds uh, with my internal or or yeah my personal values in in life. And this is trust and openness. This is fairness. This is uh, in initiative and responsibility. Yeah. Uh, this is legality. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is uh, diversity uh, in wider meaning of this word. And, and this is what, what, when we, what we started our discussion with. So in regards really to accepting different cultures, different people, yeah? having understanding of, of different opinions yeah? and, and uh, all those things. And, and uh, these things which I mentioned, these are, these are actually written down Bosch values, which corresponds very much with, with myself. So yeah, this is perhaps one of the main reasons why I'm still here. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's another um, proof how the values and how the corporate culture of a company can be, if not the, then one of the most important factors how to retain um, its, its, its key personnel. So thank you, Kaspers. Um, I, um, well, the, the 30 minutes are already over, basically. Um, it's, it's very short, but this is the format of this um, of this um, series. We would like to keep it short and to the point. But since we um, started a little bit later, I think we have time for one more question maybe from the audience. So I would like to ask the audience, is there another question maybe that you also would like to post or ask directly to the Kaspers? If not, then Kaspers, I have one last question for you. Um, I know that Bosch also was one of the first um, companies to be CO2 neutral. What about, what about this? How, how do you assess this? What did you do in order to achieve it? And, and what are your maybe future plans regarding this topic? Yeah, very simple. This is also regarding the corporate social responsibility, because uh, if we calculate just purely today financially this uh, maybe we wouldn't be so profitable but um, yeah Bosch is the first and, and I would really like to stress this word the first uh, such scale industrial company which is completely CO2 neutral since 2020 so Bosch managed that um, if we go into the details so th there was a uh, long uh, work done before that before this was realized uh, but yeah, this, this is the fact. And now Bosch is even helping other companies to achieve that. And, and uh, even uh, Bosch established a, a special uh, consul uh, consul consultancy structure uh, in order to support uh, further internal activities as well as the external customers in regard to CO2 neutrality. And, and there are four main activities. So first and foremost, this is uh, energy efficiency. 
this is uh, buying only green energy whenever it's possible. Uh, this is developing own green energy uh, generation as well as investing or, or, or having long-term agreements with, with uh, new investments in green energy. And for, for, for the small rest, which is uh, where, where we unavoidably still emit some CO2, we, we do uh, compensation measures, certified compens compensation measures. So yeah, globally Bosch is CO2 neutral since last year. Awesome. I think this is very impressive as the first company um, of this size to be CO2 neutral. Um, respect, really. Um, okay, so I think um, the time is really over. Um, thank you very much, Kaspers. I hope everybody enjoyed this. As I said, we would like to keep it um, short and crisp so that we're not wasting too much of everybody's time. But I think um, to have a coffee in the morning for 30 minutes and just listen to um, very interesting stories um, is, is a very good start in, in the day. So I would like to once again thank you, Kaspers. Thank everybody here in the audience. And I would like to give the last word to you, Kaspers. Um, is there anything that you would like to say um, from, from your side, maybe to our viewers, to our audience? Um, the final floor is yours. Thanks, Dominic. Uh, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. And there is one, one important thing which I didn't mention when you asked me what I have learned uh, or, or yeah, what, yeah, what I have learned uh, while working at Bosch. And I think one very important thing is that I learned uh, German Baltic Chamber of Commerce. So, and this is exactly the way how, why I'm here. So, and, and I am enjoying it. So uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, definitely the best chamber in the Baltics. Yeah. It's no doubt the most stronger one uh, and, and the best one, absolutely. And I'm uh, really happy that we have so many, uh, yeah, friends, participants, colleagues, and, and uh, yeah, I, I, I really appreciate also what, what our chamber has done during the, this uh, COVID-19 crisis. And I'm definitely convinced that uh, also for the future, for, for all the members, this is a very good platform to, to exchange with each other, to use all the benefits and opportunities and, and really to grow the business together with the Chamber. So, yeah, uh, this is uh, one thing which I would wish to the Chamber and to all the members. So to, to have a successful year, successful business, but uh, most important, uh, stay healthy, both physically and, and mentally healthy. Yeah, because we are all tired from the restrictions from only looking in, into the screens and and yeah my personal wish is to see a lot of you also physically soon yeah maybe not very soon but still this year in in some uh, common meetings of, of the german baltic chamber of commerce so take care and stay healthy and thank you for for taking part today thank you very much thank you very much everybody have a great day bye bye bye